Hi, my name is John. Welcome back to another episode. We'll be finishing up. No, we won't. Hi, my name is John. This is part two of creating a replacement part for a drafting table out of a piece of aluminum. Welcome to another episode. I was expecting this to be the final episode of creating the replacement part for the drafting table, but I ran into a few things. Uh, and the first thing I did is uh, I decided to use a quarter inch cutter. Now, almost all of my milling so far has been with one eighth inch diameter cutters or smaller. And on my tag, a quarter inch cutter is pushing things more than I have before. I got a copy of G-Wizard, so I used that to see how far I could push my machine. But one of the things I discovered is that I cannot get anywhere close to where G-Wizard recommends with a, a quarter inch cutter. And there are a couple of reasons for that, but the main one is because of the tool holders I'm using. And the problem is the tool holders I'm using have a set screw to hold the cutter in place. The cutter tends to try to pull out because of the forces that are uh, pulling it down. Now I do have a new uh, headstock, I think that it's called, on the way that we'll use in ER20, I think it is, call it. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, and that means that I'll be able to hold the cutter in place really well and it won't be uh, slipping out. Um, <clears throat> so with that said, let's uh, head to the workshop and uh, you'll see how things went. Uh, certainly not as well as I was hoping. I had a few issues, but um, uh, I think I'm finally getting the hang of working with uh, quarter inch cutters. And as I say, once I get better tool holders, it should go much better and I should be able to push this machine a lot harder. I took the model and added a few tabs in the model. You know, these are just uh, thin tabs to try to keep things in place. And then when I work on the, the cam, I like to do one thing at a time. Now this time, I haven't done much work on my tag with mills that are a quarter inch diameter. I usually use mills that are one eighth inch in diameter or less. So here I'm trying a one inch, one eighth, sorry, one quarter inch diameter mill with adaptive cutting. And you can see it's doing a fairly good depth of cut. Uh, if we take a look at the, the depth, you can see that the depth of cut is about uh, 0.4 inches, which seems quite a bit to me. So one of the things I did is I uh, purchased a copy of G Wizard to see what it would say about this. And I set this up. I have a quarter inch end mill with uh, two flutes. I'm going to, the manufacturer suggests 1200 surface feet per minute, which seems pretty high. Chip load of two thousands. And it, this is calling for RPM of uh, 8146. Um, I'm not sure how that fits in. I'll have to take a look. But you know, all of this is in the green, and you can see here that I've got a depth of cut. Where's the depth of cut? Um, cut width, cut depth of 0.375. So <laughs> I'm still nervous about that. I'm going to try dropping it down to 0.3 inches and see what that says. And yeah, it, it's asking for more RPM. That's good because I have 10,000 RPM. So I think I'll give that a try and go back here to this, set my depth of cut to three thousandths, regenerate that, and you'll see that it has uh, probably a few more. Well, no, it's still the same number, so it's basically two cuts. So I'm going to try this. I'm going to see how it does. I'm, I'm still not completely convinced that this is going to work, mainly because I haven't pushed this my machine this hard before. But I'm going to give it a try. So let's over to, head over to the mill and see how this turns out.
I'm going to set the approximate uh, XY location and then set the uh, Z height for the, uh, the facing operation so this doesn't have to be precise at all. Now on the screen I'm going to set my XY Z0. Start the, uh, the spindle and then uh, press uh, second start. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, I could have sworn I had my uh, thing set up correctly. I'm not quite sure what's going on. I'll have to have a look. I loaded the G-code into NC Viewer to see what was going on and also looked up the various G-codes and discovered this. I've been bitten by this before and I had forgotten about it. I had changed it in my local post processor but somehow it's not using that anymore. So what that is doing is it's going to the safe Z but I don't have end stops for homing on my machine so it doesn't know where safe Z is so it's just choosing some arbitrary location. So what I need to do here is go to the use safe retract and change that to no and post process and that should fix the problem. Okay, I've got things set up again. I've got everything zeroed. Uh, I'm going to do the surfacing and uh, hopefully it'll work this time. <laughs> This was in a really aggressive cut and one of the things that I noticed when I looked really carefully in the center is that the center was actually higher than the parts farther out and what that told me is that the tool was actually being pulled down so I needed to restart this with uh, less aggressive cutting. Here I'm at the end of the adaptive clearing which is uh, the 3D adaptive to remove most of the material from the first half. And then we're going to do a 2D contour to clean up the edges around the outside. And I set this to do a finishing pass after this. So it's basically doing two passes. Uh, and it does a very nice job of uh, cleaning up the outside. I'm milling out a pocket with draft where I'll put another piece of metal in with uh, held in place with uh, pressure and force. And this allows me to mill the pin as a separate piece, uh, but it will be really strongly in place. I'm doing this so that I didn't have to buy thicker material. I would have had to include much thicker in material to include the pin as well as the body that you're seeing here. So I'm going to show that operation in the next episode. I'm using a 3D contour with a one eighth inch ball mill cutter running at 10,000 RPMs to clean up this uh, face which has a uh, draft on it and then also to clean up the fingers that are below and to the right. Here is the part as it came out of the milling machine. It turned out pretty well. There is one flaw right here. At some point the one eighth inch ball end mill pulled out a little bit from the holder and so started cutting a little bit deeper. Fortunately I noticed that quickly enough and then uh, retracted it, re-zeroed over here and then started the cycle again and then everything after that was uh, fine. I'm pretty happy with this. Um, the next episode we're going to be making the piece that goes into here and then I'll be hammering it in place. It'll be a friction fit. We'll build the pin and then once that's done I'll flip it over, mill the other side, you know, leave a couple tabs and then I'll cut it out and do the final finishing.